Welcome in, folks. To begin this video, I just want to tell you this. If you decide to contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and you want to apply for a workshop or anything else, what will normally happen is I will set up a video consultation with you. All right. Now, what happens is if you agree to that and we move forward with this video consultation, I will say to you at the beginning of the video consultation, are you recording this? Meaning, are you using a device to record the video, the audio, anything? Is anything being recorded onto a device? And if you say no, then I say, thank you very much. I do not consent nor permit any recording of this video communication. I do say that explicitly in every single one of my video communications. So if you're out there and you have recorded one of our video communications without my consent, you are void of honor. And in turn, I will be void of grace when it comes to dealing with you. Just putting that out there. All right, first comment comes from a normal person, 6886. Hey, check out my Parse video about the word normal, if you want to know what that means. But they say, oh boy, these two are both crazy. These two meaning, if you look up in the thumbnail there, it's colon David Eiffel, Wynn, colon Miller, and colon Russell Hyphen J, colon Gould. My coolie on it to them was, Old girl, please further elucidate the channel viewers on the sanity of your statement. Now, I said old girl just because they said old boy. But uh, I just want them to explain why they think that the two gentlemen are crazy. Because I know a lot of folks will assume such things when they don't cognize what's being talked about in a video like we just walked in on someone talking about uh, rocket science I guess you could say or rocket surgery as George Bush jr. once said you walk in on some two scientists having a discussion about that you might think they're crazy because you don't understand what they're talking about it's the same with this it's a technology and if folks are talking about it and you don't understand it, you might think they're crazy. Because Dark Garnet, you haven't got to that learning yet. you got to get to the education. <clears throat> so far, a normal person has not corresponded back. K-T-S-L-A-Y, K-T Slay says, What has this technology gained you? What is your objective? What is your goal? Have you experienced relief from a legal situation using this technology? Well, let's just go in order. What has this technology gained you? It has gained me autonomy. It has gained me stewardship over my contracts. What is your objective? Well, when I began in 2017, my objective was to get closure on the grammar, which I did, Start teaching the grammar, which I did, and write correct sentence structure, communication, parsley, syntax, grammar, contract, which I did. So I have achieved my objectives. What is your goal? Well, I just shared you with you my goals there. So actually, to be more accurate, I'll answer the other question. What is your objective? My obje objective is to teach those who want to learn the grammar technology known as correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. That is my objective, to teach those who want to learn. And then I already shared with you what my goals were. I already achieved those. Have you experienced relief from legal situation using this technology? Well, I wouldn't phrase it in the terms of relief, okay? I have experienced success in stopping the trespass of the legal system on numerous occasions in the private and confidential. And 
you can believe that or not believe it, it doesn't really matter to me simply because my, as I said, objective is to teach those who want to learn this grammar. And I don't want to try and entice people to come in and learn this by sharing hero stories. Because you can get that on all those other channels out there. Well, there's not a lot, but there's a few channels out there of people over and over ad nauseum sharing the same stories over and over about how the judges go running out of the courtroom. They went a running and uh, this, that, and the third. You know, just all these stories that, well, yeah, they're on video, but they haven't released them. Sure they haven't. Sure it is. Blah, 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 blah. There's no proof of any of it. I, however, do have proof. I have a continuance of the evidence. I have an entire file folder full of evidence. But I'm not compelled to pull that out to show anybody. Because it is confidential. So if you need me to show you my personal successes with it, why? Why, why do I need to prove anything to you? If you're interested in learning the grammar, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. We can talk face to face, quote unquote, and I'll be happy to share with you my private confidential evidence of success when it's just you and I. But I'm not going to do that in the public. But it's up to you to step forward or not. And most folks quite frankly, don't have the cojones to even request a consultation from me. So good luck with that. Thanks for the comment. Next comment comes from Quadruple A. Thank you for your membership. And they say, Tom, being a Mason, he probably knew at one point in time the accomplishments could be compromised due to the personality of Dick and thus guarded the critical things. I guess that's a question. Harry is a new character to me. This is in relation to Quantum Grammar Shoot 134, where I tell a bedtime story about fictional characters Tom, Dick, and Harry. Um, I don't know if Quadruple A is making a statement there, because they begin by making a statement. Tom being a Mason, he probably knew at one point in time accomplishments could be compromised due to the personality of Dick, and thus guarded the critical things but then they put a question mark and then a period. So it's either a question or a statement. I'm not sure which. So I'm going to just guess that they're making a statement, that that is their best guess at what was going on. And a lot of folks who are prone to what we would call hero worship, putting folks up on a pedestal, they're prone to doing things like that. They want to make excuses for Tom. They want to give him every out in the book, which, I mean, that's fine if that's how you want to navigate. I navigate looking at the facts. And the facts of this particular scenario, if it were an actual scenario, would be to look at the grammar, period, end of story, bottom line. If this were a real scenario, real, actual scenario. So that's the way I look at it. Another one from K.T. Slay, and they say, Romley didn't write the bills, acts, and codes. No kidding. The Commonwealth trustees did, using the Chicago Styles Manual for the construction, as far as I can tell from listening to Rom. Oh, so you take Rom's word for it. Rom is the authority of what you know and your knowledge regarding this topic. Gotcha. I, uh, and as far as quantum grammar, it's a red herring rabbit hole that is like speaking Egyptian to a Spaniard. That is not correct, actually. Because it's grammar, not a language. It's quite obvious. It's not correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, language. It's grammar. Different things. So you can use quantum grammar with Egyptian. You can use quantum grammar with Spanish. Egyptian, which... I'm not sure that Egyptian is an actual language, is it? I mean, that tells me kind of like where your head's at there, K.T. Slay. Uh, Spanish is a language, but I'm not sure Egyptian is a language. But correct sentence structure can be used with Arabic. 
as well, if that's what you're talking about. Now, if you're saying it's a red herring rabbit hole, how do you know that if you don't know anything about correct sentence structure? If you don't know anything about quantum grammar, how do you know it's a red her herring rabbit hole? Or are you just parroting what you heard old Rom say? Because Rom doesn't know jack shit about correct sentence structure either. And I actually offered to teach him. I actually offered a free consultation to answer any questions he had about it. He could put me on the spot, challenge me, whatever. I offered him that. He turned it down. He didn't want anything to do with it. So it is what it is. Next comment comes from Afro Jump TM, and they say, does a tiger change its stripes? No. And then Dev Woos says, well said, the circus is still going on. I just thought Afro Jump's comment was funny. Uh, I mean, I get why they're saying what they're saying. But if you think about that logically, like from an objective, logical point of view, why would a tiger want to change their stripes? If you see a tiger out there in the wild walking around, why would a tiger, why would that thought even enter a tiger's head that they'd want to change their stripes? Why would it even be a consideration? Doesn't make much sense, does it? That can, particular analogy. And if you're looking at the thumbnail there of Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, if you're talking about them having stripes and wanting to change it, actually, they change quite often. They're like chameleons. They change to whatever stripes their masters, their lord and masters, want them to change their stripes to. Whatever's convenient to the shareholders. Just saying. Completely different than a beautiful tiger. Next comment comes from Zimnik67, and Zimnik says, you are an uneducated moron who is full of himself. He is proof of that. Who's proof of that? The word atmos comes from the Greek word atmos, which means smoke or vapor. Hmm. Is what he's saying true? Let's find out. So I guess this is what our friend Zimnik is talking about. In the video that he's commenting on, which is a very old video, like five or six years old, I parse the word atmosphere. And what Zimnik is talking about is this, where you have atmos, coming from Greek atmos vapor steam, But actually, if you go back even further, Zimnik, it means to blow or to inspire, spiritually arouse. So you didn't really go back far enough. But that's of no consequence here because what I did is I broke it down to all of the particles of the word, i.e. the syllables. And how do you find out the syllables of a word? Well, Zimnik. Glad you asked. Just like in kindergarten, you clap your hands. Atmosphere. So that's three syllables. Am I right? Let's find out. Let's type it into how many syllables. Atmosphere. Oh, look, it's three syllables. At most and fear, which is exactly what I parsayed in the video that's five or six years old that you are commenting on. So you didn't finish your study or your work. You left it half done. You kind of half asked it, Zimnik. Who's the moron now? Next comment comes from beautiful Kaya, and they say, as an indigenous to Aotearoa, I hope I pronounced that right. Apologies if I did not. This lady who resides in Australia, and she means Lady Crown, will never speak on our behalf here in Aotearoa. 
Sorry she's doing this. She is not a reflection of who we are or who our great ancestors are. Well, beautiful Kaya, I don't know if Lady Crown is still doing anything. I really don't. I haven't really checked in or looked at anything they're doing. I haven't been in communication with them for years, so I have no idea what they're doing now. This uh, was just um, a video I did clarifying the little scenario that I personally had with the Purple Thumb community years ago. This was years ago. Again, I have not been in communication with them for a very long time, nor do I wish to be in communication with them. Uh, but I do honor what you're saying here, and I'm happy to give you this platform to share that message that Lady Crown does not speak on you and your indigenous uh, folks down there. Thanks for the comment. Final comment comes from Jeannie Hayes. And they say, I'm no troll, nor am I a guest. Your videos show up in my feed like a salesperson knocking at my door soliciting their product. That's all. And my coolie on it to that is, the minute you clicked on the video and chose to comment, you became a willing guest by your own volition. You chose to open your mouth and insert your foot. But don't worry, you can also choose not to not comment, shut your mouth and leave. But somehow I doubt you will. Now let me clarify that. They say they're not a guest, but yet they're choosing to comment in my comments field. They are clear, anytime you comment on someone's comments field, you are a guest of that comments field, of that platform. It's just like if you walk into somebody's house and start talking, you're a guest there. You're in my house when you come into my comments field. Is that hard to, is that hard to understand? And then they said that my videos show up in their feed like a salesperson knocking on their door soliciting their product. Okay, but you don't have to open the door, do you? I have no control over where my videos go on YouTube. YouTube controls that. So if you want to whine and cry about that, then you have to whine and cry to YouTube, not to me. I have no control over what comes on in your feed. Actually, you do. Based upon what you click on and what you watch on YouTube, that's what's going to show up in your feed. So actually, you're the one that's accountable for what shows up in your feed. And there is no product that's being solicited. And also, need I point out, Jeannie Hayes, nobody twisted your arm to click on my video. I'm pretty sure no one did. You did it of your own volition. So, think about that. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.